Hi there, I'm Vienno and in this D3 tutorial I'll show you how to create the histogram layout in D3. And I think this is, this is video number 17. So uh, histograms are used for showing value distribution and in preparation for this video I've prepared this ages.csv file which contains, let's imagine this is a population of individuals. Uh, we have the name of each individual and we have the age of that person. And uh, since I'm lazy, I just call them all max. It doesn't really matter. We, we're just interested in showing the dis distribution of ages within this population. So uh, whenever we have external data like this, as you know by now, we need to load uh, that data. So I'll do that like this. And as you know by now, our, uh, our data is stored in this data variable. So let's take a look at our data first of all. If we inspect this, you can see that we have an array of objects, each with the age property and the name property. But since we're only interested in the age of each person, we want to create a new array consisting of only the age values and the way you do that in JavaScript is using something called the map function so I'll create a new variable here containing our new data and I'll say data dot map and this function goes through each element in our array and returns a new array based on our criteria within parentheses here so I'll create a new function and the i variable here, the, f the argument of the function, refers to each element in our array. So this is just a, a sidetrack to our histogram, but I think it's a, it can be good to know. So we'll say return i.h, which returns the age um, property of each object. So if we take a look at this new data map, you can see that we have a new array consisting of the ages. But each a problem is that whenever you load uh, numbers from CSV files, they are actually returned as strings, not as numbers. So we need to convert these to numbers. And that is an easy task for JavaScript. We'll just use the parse int function. So we'll say parse int h, and if we refresh this now, we can see that we have an array of numbers. So let's create our actual uh, histogram. Let's uh, call it histogram, and we say d3.layout.histogram. And then we can specify the number of intervals that we want to display. And I'll say 5 here. Um, and finish off by specifying where our data is coming from and you do that uh, like this so if we take a look at our new data here at the histogram uh, variable and refresh you can see that we are returned with an array of arrays and each of these well you can see first of all that we have five arrays here which corresponds corresponds to the value that we supplied the uh, bins method with and each of these represents an interval of values and so as you can see the first array consists of 20 values the second one six values and so on and if we take a look at one of these you can see that they have first of all we have all um, a number of values but we also have a dx property, an x property, and a y property. This is something that the histogram layout uh, automatically calculates for us. And what these mean is, first of all, the dx property. The dx represents uh, the range or span or width of each uh, array or each interval. So if we take a look at our at the next array, this one has a span of 17.2. Uh, 
and this one has the same span and that is because the histogram layout per default splits um, splits our data in uniform um, intervals if you will so this oh this first array goes from 0 to 17.2 all the ages all the uh, data elements within that range the next one goes from 17.2 to whatever 17.2 times 2 is and so on and the X property stands for the lower bound in oh can you hear the ice cream truck um, the X stands for the lower bound of our of this array so this one starts with 0 and the next one starts with 17.2 right and uh, yeah so so the the number 17.2 is not actually represented in the array but the range goes from 17.2 and, and so on the last property the Y property contains the number of values in each range or each uh, interval so those are the three additional properties that the histogram layout provides us with and now I'm just going to show you real quick how to actually visualize this data uh, and I think we'll have to wait for the next video to make it pretty but yes okay so um, we have our data here what we need to do next is well First of all, create our canvas. So we'll say for our canvas, and you've seen this a, mi a million times, so I don't have to explain this. Let's just give it a width. Okay, so let's bind our data to the document. We'll create a G element for each um, data element that we have. So we'll say select all uh, bar data is coming from the histogram. Enter and then we'll ap append a G element. Now to each G element we'll append a rectangle which is the actual bar. So let's say bars dot append rect and uh, here we need to um, uh, specify the, the properties. So this is where the interesting parts uh, comes in. First of all, let's give it um, the X property, which is the horizontal coordinate and since SVG starts drawing from the top left corner we can let's just make this basic histogram um, to a number of bars going from the top to bottom so the X uh, position would be the lower bound of each bar or sorry the lower bound of each uh, bin or interval so the first one will be drawn from uh, zero, right here to the left. The second one will be start uh, will start drawing from 17.2 and so on. So we'll just make this a function of our data. And uh, we'll set this to return the X, which stands for the lower bound. And then the Y will also be a function and uh, since uh, what we want to show with each interval or each bar is the number of persons that has an age within that interval we want to make the, uh, the height of each bar a function of the number of values in that interval or in within that bin so we'll return the Y property Next, we need to set the width, and the width will be uh, also a function, and that will represent the range or span of each bin. 
and since they're all uniformly they have the same range we'll just say uh, return d the dx property which stands for the range and finally we'll set the height to um, oh sorry I, I made a mistake here each bar will be drawn from the top so we'll just say zero here but the height of each uh, bar will be a function of the number of, uh, of values within it so let's return dy here and if we save this and refresh we, we have a we have our uh, histogram here but it's not it's not really visible let's first of all give it a nicer nice uh, nicer color say steel blue and uh, just to show you what what this looks like I'll just multiply this uh, so it gets a, a bit bigger something like that and a refresh and you can see that we have our histogram here you can't really tell anything uh, right now we need to uh, append an axis and some values to each bar but that was the the basic principles behind the histogram layout and in the next video we'll style this a bit. So I'll see you in the next video.